Hey, how's it going everybody? I am Dan Thompson with Claris Networks and this is another edition of What's Up in Tech. Today we are talking about a riveting discussion of passwords. So uh, I have actually a special guest with me today, Slade Griffin from Cypho Security. He is a very security minded individual. Uh, so good person to have in weigh in on the topic. So uh, let's dive right in. Recently in the news, Yahoo was uh, announcing that they had some passwords compromised. Uh, it's a great reminder that we need to have solid passwords. Obviously when passwords get compromised, it's no help to you because they've done something to subvert uh, Yahoo security, but brings up the topic. So Slade, dive right in. What do you think? Passwords? Should we even worry about them? Well, I, we, we should for now because that's what that's the measure of protection that we have available to us. Uh, we, we'll be having different measures of protection in the, in the future, uh, such as, you know, accessing things through a smart token via our phones or, or some other metric like that. But uh, for now, uh, we do have to rely on our passwords. And so, yeah, it's something that you do have to think about. So when I think about passwords, generally what I recommend to our customers or what the stance that we kind of take are passphrases. Um, so let's think about a sentence instead of just a password because it's way easier to remember uh, I love cheetahs with an exclamation point than it is like BR5476QB32. Let me write that down. <laughs> right, so I mean immediately like the one, one of those passwords that you remember is obviously I love cheetahs, right? So um, how do you feel about that and what do you typically see uh, in, the, in the space and how do you think people should handle it? Uh, definitely longer is better. Uh, just the mathematics of having a longer, what we would call a key space. So the 26 characters of the alphabet and, and not limiting yourself uh, to, and then using numbers with that would help. Uh, and I would recommend not using a standard phrase that goes all at once, I love cheetahs, maybe three random words mm -hmm. that, that would go together to make it less likely that that would be in a dictionary or something mm -hmm. that a hacker would use to try and compromise. Uh, what they really get from Yahoo are the hashes. They don't get your actual password, right. they have to break that later, but we won't get into what hashes are today. <laughs> so so let, me t let me throw this out there. So the common uh, rebuttal to the whole password thing is, man, it's just so hard to remember. Or, you know, that thing is so yeah. long, I'm just gonna write it down and I'm gonna end up sticking it to my monitor, which defeats the whole purpose anyway. But, um, you know, my response is passphrases makes that easier because it's easier to remember, but what are your thoughts? Well, I do think you can come up with a mnemonic which helps you remember that, or, or, or an acronym that helps you remember it. And, and certainly there would be things that people would be familiar with that they could use that would be longer phrases. Uh, and I'm not actually opposed to the entire idea of writing them down as long as you don't stick them to the device <laughs> which they protect. Uh, we as a society have actually gotten pretty good at protecting small valuable pieces of paper. We just call it cash. Right. Uh, and you know we can, we can certainly protect a, a password in the same way if we needed to. Yeah, that's good thinking. So um, let's talk about one other aspect. So on the personal side of things, right, with, with our corporate, you know, obviously those passwords can be as long as whatever. Uh, I have run into though some websites um, I can't, can't think of the ones off the top of my head, maybe Hotmail or Outlook.com. One of those uh, has this weird length restriction. So what do we do? How do we manage for our personal selves? How do we manage a website that won't let us use a what we would consider a secure password? Right. So in general, what we would consider secure is over 15 or 16 characters, mm -hmm. right? And, and certainly, uh, definitely the one of the companies I use for uh, some of my services limits it to, to less than 12. Oh, nice. And so, yeah, I, I run into that as well. And so what I do in that case is try to make it as complex as possible uh, with, with no word from any language and, and try and mix it up. And then, and then I do record them and I keep them uh, in, a, in a location that I can refer to if I forget it. <laughs> nice. Good thing. I actually do the same thing. Uh, I have a, a spreadsheet that I keep all mine stuff. Probably shouldn't have said that because now you'll be looking for spreadsheets. If you're I'm excited right. about that. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so uh, also things to think about, right, are keeping these passwords unique. So your Facebook password should not be the same as your Twitter password, should not be the same as your corporate logon, mm. should not be your husband's birthday or your dog's name or, right, easily guessable things. These are all things to kind of think in the back of your head as you're coming up with passwords. Uh, I do get, I mean, it can be complicated. There are so many services out there today that require passwords. So maybe think of something that would help you easily remember what all those passwords but not be the same password in fact. So also available today are what they call password vaults or just apps that will hang on to these passwords or you know an application that runs on your PC. Uh, obviously um, you know I use a spreadsheet. What do you feel about password apps, password vaults? How do you feel about those? Uh, I think they can be used and, and used well and used securely. Uh, you'll want to examine you know how are they protecting the password itself? You know what, what encryption are they using to store your password? And then uh, the most important factor is that 
application will be as secure as the password you use to access it. Yeah, that's and, a great and point. So it's 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 you you have put all the keys in one place, mm -hmm. so that one lock is the one that must be protected. So I think I'm. This is this is actually surprising to me. I think I'm one step more paranoid than you on this, uh, because uh, for me, apps, especially Android apps, like we have no assurance as to who wrote those right. and writes what's feeding them out of the back. So I personally don't like the Android app versions of uh, Password Vault, just simply because I don't know anything about the person that made it. But um, that may be a little bit too paranoid. But I, I don't know. Can you be too paranoid? I wouldn't think so. I, I don't use those apps either, and, right. uh, and I don't use them on my PC either because, again, you don't know, is it is it beaconing out? A uh, few people would know how to monitor their network traffic, especially in a home in environment or, or people that don't have an IT staff. You know, what where is it sending my data off somewhere? Right, that's, yeah. That's a, that'd be tough to monitor. Good point. So uh, things to think about as you go about your daily lives using technology. So uh, again, this is Slade Griffin with Cypho Security. I'm Dan Thompson with Clearest Networks, and we will catch you next time on What's Up in Tech.